In a recent YouTube production, I was at pains to stress that differential focusing is easily accomplished with micro four thirds. However, as the system delivers more depth of field at most settings than other larger formats, this can be an advantage under challenging situations. I speak of low light when the camera is forced to use a wide aperture for correct exposure, thus reducing depth of field. Inside a church, tripods may not be permitted, therefore longer shutter speeds permitting a smaller aperture to increase depth of field are not feasible, especially if the ISO has to be kept at 200 to maintain quality, which is a normal requirement incidentally in my commercial work. Tripods are not permitted at King's College Chapel, Cambridge and all National Trust properties. Nevertheless, Micro Four Thirds comes into its own with extended depth of field and if using Olympus OMD cameras and lenses, add a superior image stabilization system that takes your breath away. This is best shown by analyzing some images taken in low light and handheld, for which you will have to take my word. Let's start with Kings. I have included a shot with people to give scale. Even at f2.2, there is unbelievable depth of field. The shutter speed was a 200th of a second. I could have gone to a 100th, allowing a smaller aperture to increase depth of field. Instead, I have done something else. Traditional photographers will realize that I have used the hyperfocal distance a technique dependent on where the photographer focuses. Whatever the camera focuses on, depth of field extends twice as much behind the subject than in front, irrespective of aperture and focal length of lens, here 25mm or 50 in film. Therefore, if you allow auto to focus on the back wall, depth of field is wasted risking an out-of-focus foreground. Instead, I manually focused more or less where the lady is marching towards me, bringing depth of field forwards, thus ensuring that the foreground is sharp. Easy. Although compelled to do so, hand-holding an Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II in Kings was not a problem as there was plenty of light. But in the dark corners of a Norman cathedral, for example Hereford, you need the additional stabilization of a 12 to 100 Pro lens. Apparently, the reason why the Olympus OMD stabilization is so successful is due to micro four thirds. The sensor literally has more wriggle room to do its stuff and because it is smaller this is easier to achieve than in a full frame camera without making it huge. Hereford has a fine Norman cathedral but the windows are much smaller than at King's letting in less light to the main body of a much larger church. Keeping the ISO at 200, as with King's, the shutter speed has now dropped to a thirteenth of a second, but it is still sharp. Now for the impossible. I zoom in to that wonderful ceiling, but keeping the ISO at 200 for optimum quality. The focal length of the lens is now 44mm, that is 88 in film, aperture F4, the maximum the 12 to 100 can deliver, but the shutter speed is a tenth of a second. So is it sharp? Mind you, I held my breath and possess two fine legs posing as a tripod, which most of us have. Do you remember the 1950s Charles 
Atlas advert, you too can have a body like mine. I never took up the offer, but there might be a connection here. Let's go back to depth of field before I get into problems, which I will immediately step into, but now of a photographic kind. At Ely, this was a huge challenge, which I haven't got quite right. There is noise, and there would be more if I had lightened the choir stalls in Lightroom. The shutter speed is a quarter of a second at f4, the ISO increased to 400. I would find more annoying blown out highlights, especially in the distant window. Would full frame have done better handheld? I would need to see proof and not just words. This shot has worked better and has incredible depth of field at f4. The shutter speed was a fifth of a second handheld. The National Trust allow photography inside their houses, but no tripods, monopods or flash. So you are on your own. We are at times too heavily reliant on technology, but when that is removed and there are additional problems, such as people, even other photographers, it becomes a totally different ball game where micro four thirds win. If you can avoid noise, then in this situation, the superior image stabilization and depth of field come into its own. At Kettleston, I had the opportunity to test image stabilization again in camera and lens. Yes, the two are working together, allowing me to shoot close in at a quarter of a second. The focal length of my lens is now set at 86 mm, that is 172 in film. So quite a decent telephoto increasing the spectre of camera shake. At Mount Stewart on Butte, not National Trust, photography however is allowed but with the same restrictions, I used a different lens, the 12 to 200, but it does not have its own image stabilization, so I had to rely on the camera. It is sharp at a fifth of a second, and depth of field again is incredible. But now I am using a wide angle optic which helps stabilization. When working in challenging situations, the additional depth of field offered by Micro Four Thirds, if used correctly, and the technical addition of superior image stabilization in camera and lens is a saving grace. Noise associated with long shutter speeds and images having a high dynamic range are still a problem at times, but thankfully the technology continues to improve.